All right, to get started, one of the first things we have to do is safely raise the front of the truck by the frame so the suspension's hanging. After that, remove all five lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that the wheel's off, we're gonna follow our ABS wire up and behind here and we're gonna disconnect it. Go ahead and grab this tab, lift it up and slide it out. It's always a good idea to check for any corrosion. If you see some, you need to take care of it. The next thing we need to do is remove this from the frame. I'm just gonna use a little fork tool. You can use a pry bar, screwdriver, whatever you've got. Pop that out of there. Now we need to continue on to dismounting any of the mounting points that you can see for the ABS wire. Now the next thing we're going to do is just go ahead and get our cotter pin out for our outer tie rod end and then remove that tie rod end nut. We're going to separate the tie rod end from the knuckle. We're going to do that by hitting right on the knuckle with our hammer. Now we're going to pivot this and then we're going to remove our caliper mounting bolts. Grab onto that caliper. We're gonna hang this aside so it's putting no pressure on our flex hose. Now let's get our rotor off. Now the next thing we're gonna do is remove our axle nut. Go ahead and remove that washer. Now we're gonna separate the axle from the bearing. Use a punch right in the center. Give it a couple loving bonks just to ensure it's free. Now looking along where the bearing connects onto your hub, you're going to be able to see the mounting bolts coming through. Let's go ahead and spray down those threaded areas, and then of course the area along the bearing and the knuckle. Now let's go ahead and pivot this, and then access our bolts from the back side of the knuckle. We're going to remove all three. Now that all of our mounting bolts are out, we're going to continue on with our hammer, and we're going to break the bearing free from the knuckle. All right, so now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove our lower ball joint nut right here. Now it's going to be time to unscrew our upper ball joint nut. So now the next thing we need to do is use our hammer and we're going to bonk along this area here to try to break the upper ball joint free from the knuckle itself. There we are, that was easy. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and put a jack underneath the control arm to apply a little bit of pressure. That way there we can remove this nut. Okay, so now that we have that separated, let's go ahead and lower this again. And now we're gonna use our hammer and we're gonna bonk along this area right here and try to break free the ball joint from the knuckle on the lower aspect. Before we start bonking, make sure you have your lower ball joint nut on there, a couple good threads. There we are. Remove your knuckle. Now let's go ahead and tie a bungee cord loosely around the axle, and then I'm gonna bring it right up and along the upper area of this control arm. Essentially the reason why I'm doing this is because we're gonna be getting underneath the truck, and I'm gonna be knocking this axle out of here, and I don't want it to potentially hurt me. The next thing we're going to do is take a nice long pry bar, come in behind the axle and in between the differential itself. Next I'm going to carefully pry on the two and separate them. Let's go ahead and get that strap off of there and remove the axle. There it is friends. Now that we have the axle out, we have a clear view of where the axle steel is supposed to be. Make sure that you inspect it and clean it thoroughly, otherwise just go ahead and replace it. Let's go ahead and get our axle in here. You might need to give it a couple loving bonks on the end with a rubber mallet. Okay, that's bottomed out. Now it's going to be time to get our knuckle back on here. We're going to make sure that we have our lower ball joint stud going through the lower hole in the knuckle. And then of course, the axle is going to come right through the center area. Start on that nut. 
Next, what I'm gonna do is use a nice long pry bar. I'm gonna come underneath this ridge right here and across the control arm. The reason for that is because I wanna bring this down and put the stud into the knuckle itself. After we've done that, we'll go ahead and start on our ball joint nut, snug it up, and then tighten it to manufacturer specifications. So now we're just gonna continue snugging this up and then we're gonna to torque it to 61 foot-pounds. After that, we'll move along to the bottom one, snug that up, and then torque that to 79 foot-pounds. The next thing we want to pay attention to on our ball joints is the stud and the nut itself. You're going to notice for the stud of the ball joint, it's going to have a small hole on it. And on the nut, of course, it's slotted. What we essentially want to do is line up the slot with the hole. That way there we can go ahead and put in our locking cotter pin. If for some reason when you torque this, it wasn't perfectly lined up, you would want to continue tightening until the very next slot does line up with the ball joint hole. Now let's do the same to the top one. Okay friends, now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and clean out this area right here where the bearing is going to ride. Use a brush or whatever you've got. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and get the bearing inside of our backing plate here. Let's go ahead and put that ABS wire through. Now we're going to line up the slot for the ABS wire with where it actually is. Carefully put this up and onto your axle and then line up your bearing holes with the backing plate holes and the knuckle. Now we're gonna take our bolts, check the threads, and then of course add a little bit of red thread locker. After that, let's go ahead and start them in and then torque them to manufacturer specifications. Now let's go ahead and torque these bolts to 77 foot-pounds. Do the same to all. On there, let's continue on to putting on our ABS wire and of course the nut, we'll snug that up as well. Now let's go ahead and secure the flex hose to the control arm itself. I'm going to take my bolt, go through from the inside, come through the hole, and then of course we'll put our nut on there and tighten it up. Now let's go ahead and connect in our ABS wire. Give it a nice click, make sure it's secured, and then we're going to put it into its mounting point. There we are. We'll just go ahead and put this right into its mounting point as well. Now the next thing we want to do is put on our axle nut with the washer. We'll bottom this out, and then we're going to torque it to 103 foot-pounds. All right, so now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you clean up the mating surface on your hub and on the back side of your rotor, basically the places where they're gonna be touching against each other when we put them back together. Add a little bit of copper never sees. Let's go ahead and get our rotor on there. And then of course I like to use a lug nut just to hold the rotor so it doesn't wobble around on me. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get our caliper on. Slide that right over. Now we're gonna put in both of our caliper mounting bolts. Okay, nice and tight. Let's install the outer tie rod end to the knuckle. Go ahead and snug this up and then we'll torque it to 35 foot-pounds. So now that we have a torque, something that you want to pay attention to is the stud of the tie rod to the slot on the nut. Essentially we want it to match up so we can put in our cotter pin. If for some reason it doesn't, continue tightening until the very next slot does. Go ahead and peen over that cotter pin so there's no way the tie rod nut can come loose. Let's go ahead and get our wheel on here, start all of our lug nuts, snug them up, and then get the wheel on the ground, torque it to 100 foot-pounds. All right, let's torque these to 100. Torqued. If you have your little lug covers, go ahead and throw those on as well. Okay friends, so we got the job complete. Now all you have to do is go ahead and pump up your brake, check your brake fluid, and then of course get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop.